Welcome to Five Points Blues presentation of Back to the Basics. Everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but were too afraid to ask. Here are your hosts, Nikki Harrison and Christy Scales. Happy Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. Back to the Basics, everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but were too afraid to ask. I'm Nikki Harrison here with Christy Scales, and we have joining us today the other half of head coach Jason Garrett's, his beautiful wife, Brill Garrett, is here joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you. And Brill is here. Um, well, we always love to have you. Anytime you want to come, it's Absolutely. an open invitation. But when you get to co-headline with former First Lady Laura Bush mm -hmm. as the chairperson for the Celebration of Reading event, which takes place next Tuesday, November 6th at the Morton Meyerson Symphony Center. I know literacy is your pa one of your passions, Brill. So tell us about the big event that takes place with the Celebration of Reading. Well, I put literacy right next to football on my <laughs> list of priorities. Love that. Uh -huh. Next Tuesday, a week from today, we have the Celebration of Reading, which is sponsored and hosted by the Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Literacy. And note the title, Family Literacy. So yeah. this is about making sure that children can read, but also that their parents can read. So as much as this is about literacy, it's also about illiteracy because of the staggering statistics that we have about illiteracy in our country. Reading is one of the basic tools that we all should have. What attracts me to literacy is reading, because reading is fun. It's something that I've always loved to do as a child. As soon as I knew how to read, it was always the decision. Do you go outside and do something with your friends, or do you stay home and read? <laughs> Both were equally um, intriguing for me. So. I want other kids to know that this, it's an alternative activity that is can take you different places, can introduce you to different people, can help you with your emotions. And then everything that you do in reading applies in every subject in school. That's Math, right. science, history, you have to be able to read in order to participate in the classroom. And so that applies in the workplace as well. Here I am with these two accomplished people and both of you have papers in front of you, and you're ready to do some reading while you're working. So it's something that's critical to success in everything that we do. For our players, they have to know how to read in order to be able to diagram the plays and read where they're going to be going and what their assignments are. So it's critical across the board. Well, this Absolutely. celebration of reading event that's taking place, and by the way, tickets and sponsorships are still available, and all the money goes to some of the great family literacy programs, and we'll talk more about that. But what's really awesome is not only uh, the Bush family being involved, this is the first event since uh, former First Lady Barbara Bush passed. And so it's uh, for the uh, Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Literacy but the Bushes are involved, but you also have a stellar lineup of authors that are coming in, uh, Michael Conley, Philip Meyer, but tell us about the actual event that takes place at 7 o'clock and what we can expect during the celebration. So first, let's highlight where it's occurring. It's at the Meyerson, yeah. one of the most beautiful venues in the Metroplex. It's an incredible place to be. Just walking in the lobby, you know you're somewhere special. Yeah, and if you haven't been to the Arts District recently in Dallas, it's amazing. It's phenomenal. All of the, yeah, mm -hmm. all of the new places that they have there. So yeah, what an awesome venue for sure. Yes, Clyde Warren Park, mm -hmm. connecting mm -hmm. uptown and downtown. And the Meyerson really anchors that space. Right. And so you walk into the lobby, and there you are in this amazing venue in Dallas. Um, initially the program occurs and you walk into the actual Meyerson where the symphony plays. So you're in a venue that has really acoustics that um, are can't be matched in the world. And so you have an assigned seat and then you listen to each of the authors either read from a work or they may just choose to speak, depending on what that author wants to do. And we're really enthused about the lineup this year. You mentioned Michael Connolly. He's a New York Times bestseller. You may be familiar with his book and also became a movie, The Lincoln Lawyer. Yes, mm -hmm. You may sure. be familiar with Blood Work. And those of you who are binge watchers, you may be familiar with Bosch, oh, who yes. is an LAPD <laughs> detective, yes. and um, all the different missions that he has in the LA area. And so that's another one to um, watch and also to grab his books to read about the detective Bosch. We also have Philip Meyer, who is 
uh, who lives in Austin, and you may be familiar with him from one of my favorite books, The Sun, mm -hmm. and that's the S-O-N, Sun. Sun. Uh -huh. And it's an epic tale in Texas. It begins with a family member who is kidnapped by the Indians. His parents are slaughtered, and then he's growing up with the Indians. And then he comes back and lives with the settlers, but his heart always remains with the Indians. And so then it's his generations that come from there, and it travels through the history of Texas with the war with Mexico. It travels through um, oil and gas. It travels through the um, entree of women into powerful positions. So it's really an incredible novel. And I believe it was also made into a series on maybe um, – TNT or something. Yeah, wow. Pierce Brosnan, I think, was in was in that one. Yes, right? yes, yes. So it's excellent. Yeah, and I, I don't know if I want Philip to read from the Sun or just to speak about all the research that he put into it. Mm -hmm. But just to hear from him is going to be really cool next Tuesday. He also mm -hmm. has a critically acclaimed book, American Rust, mm -hmm. okay. uh, which that, is that was his big breakout one. I yes, think, right, and mm -hmm. that is one that's gotten a lot of um, critical acclaim and mm -hmm. is a, a great read. Also, so we have a bestseller with Michael. Connolly, then we have Philip Meyer. Then we also have one of the Bushes, um, Ellie LeBlond Sosa, and she has written a novel, uh, not a novel, she has written a book about her grandparents, their love story. Mm. So it's really timely with the passing of Barbara Bush. Absolutely. And so the whole point of this particular celebration of reading is to ensure that we carry on her legacy, Barbara Bush's legacy, her love for reading, and... Um, how she felt that could really bond families, but also propel you into a successful yeah. life. Yeah. And speaking of families, you know, one of the great families in Cowboys history, the Staubach family, mm -hmm. and is going to be represented at the celebration of reading as well with uh, Michelle, Michelle Staubach Grimes. And she has the Pidge series, which is a series of, of kids books that, that a lot of a lot of the moms and dads watching may be familiar with mm -hmm. that. Definitely. So. And Pidge is Marianne Staubach. Yeah. Her mom, yeah, that, who is that's the Roger. grandmother uh -huh. of Michelle's children and their other siblings. And if any of you have ever had the pleasure of being around Michelle, she brings so much energy. I cannot wait to see her on the stage and listen to her reading from her book or talking about whatever it is she chooses to yeah. talk about. So we'll hear from all four of those authors, and that is the program. Okay. And so it is so fun to see them on the stage and listen to them because you're used to reading their words, but to see how they can bring the words to life, mm -hmm. either of a current work or a previous work. And so that will really be a thrill. And of course, there will be some uh, discussion and tribute to Barbara Bush because of her passing. Yeah. And with, with Laura Bush and the Bush family being involved, how does that feel? How cool is that? that right. you, seriously, you're co uh, headlining a big event, a big fundraiser with the former first lady of the United States. I mean, I know that you've hung out with the Bushes because <laughs> they go out and they flip the coin before the Cowboy mm -hmm. game and serve as honorary captains. But what are what are they like and how does it feel to be up there, you know, have your name next to the first lady? Well, I think it's an honor and a privilege to be involved in a cause, literacy, that unites all of us. No matter what your political persuasion, everyone agrees that all of us should be able to read. And it's something that we should be teaching in our schools, we do teach in our schools, but we need to make sure that we're um, allowing children to know how to read and then have that tool to enjoy it. And it is also what allows us to become informed citizens so that we're in a position to make votes that we know what we're voting for. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea of our democracy. You have to be able to read, to vote, and to be an informed citizen, which is the basis of our democracy. Absolutely. And like Christy said, tickets are still available. Yes. And I see that there are two levels of tickets. We've got 125, and then what's the second level? 250? So for 250, you for 125, you're coming and enjoying the program. And for 250, you're enjoying the program. And again, it's assigned seats. And then you come out into the lobby area of the Meyerson, again, the beautiful venue. And all of the tables are set with a light supper there's tenderloin and salmon and some other little salads on the plate and you sit down with your friends and are served water wine etc desserts in the middle and you can sit and discuss the authors who you've just listened to for four hours yeah, for, nice. for you know the four yeah. authors for seven, for an hour and a half and so then you can leave as you're ready to leave or stay as long as your conversation goes so that gives you full access to all of that and then for our higher level sponsors 
prior to the seating in the Meyerson is a reception, a wine and cheese reception, and the authors will be there and you can visit with them on a more intimate basis. Very good. And yeah. it's a full day. I mean, because that morning you're also going to be attending a breakfast at at t Stadium that's going to be hosted by Gene and Jerry Jones. Yes, the Gene and Jerry Jones family hosts the breakfast, which we started three years ago, and that's been a great addition. So with our children's authors, we have had an essay contest, to, and the age depending on what the book what the book is. So last year it was the woman who, are you familiar with the Magic Tree mm-hmm. House yes. series? Yes, yes. yes. So Absolutely. she was the children's author, and okay. so the assignment was to where would you take your tree house? And so it was second through fifth graders. And I cannot tell you how heartwarming and inspirational these ideas that these kids had. So they wrote where they would, they would have to write and submit the application, and then we chose um, the winners. And so we'll have 12 winners, uh, four from each grade. And this year, um, we took a broader, because of the passing of Barbara Bush, a broader topic, which was, what is a book that has inspired you and why? And it's second through fifth graders again. And we had over 300 applications, wow. which is the most that we've yeah. had. So it Amazing. continues to increase each year. And it's open to every school district in the Metroplex. And so we have winners from Frisco, the independent school district, from Carrollton, Uh, We had submissions from the Dallas Independent School District. We have some from Hockaday, from Carrollton, from all across the Metroplex. So that's really heartwarming, too. Definitely. So um, then you are honored at this breakfast, which is at the stadium. So we think that's an exciting venue for people to come to. And the breakfast is there in one of the VIP lounges. And the, several of the winners will read from their essays. Oh, how which cool is, is so that? Exciting. So just like Michael Connolly <laughs> and Philip Meyer that night, they get to get up and read. Yes, exactly. Boy, how inspiring would that be? You know? So inspiring. Yeah, That's really awesome. Yeah, 40 years from now, they may be up at the Meyerson reading and saying, I was inspired mm-hmm. to do this when I was at the stadium. Exactly and, right. <laughs> you yeah. never yeah. know. It's, it's you never know what the spark is going to be. That's exactly. Right. And I think it's exciting that we're – honoring and celebrating kids who are doing something that may be a little more academic or creative. Um, We love to honor all of our kids who are involved in athletics, but participation in academics is just as important in creative things. So it's nice to be able to celebrate them as well in such a special place. And before before we get too far away from it, because we were talking Mm -hmm. about the $125 tickets, the $250 tickets, but also there are different uh, levels of sponsorship from $1,000 on up. There's also a really neat thing where you can do a sponsorship where you buy eight tickets for the different um, English teachers, the mm-hmm. reading reading teachers from around the Metroplex. So that would be a really neat thing. Absolutely. Uh, but we want to let everybody know yes. that they can go online, uh, barbarabush.org, which is for the um, Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Reading. Uh, but the money that is raised is going to go, it's like over 140 literacy programs around uh, our community. That, and here in yeah. Dallas, um, the Teen Trendsetters is the program that we have in this area. Yeah, tell us more about that. Okay. So that's the Barbara Bush Foundation for Family Literacy Teen Trendsetters. And so it pairs a teen with an elementary school student who is learning to read or needs a little extra help with the reading. And you're pairing with someone who still is in their zone of comfort, a high schooler who still maybe understands some things about the current events that um, maybe some older people wouldn't be quite in tune with. <laughs> so that's the idea. You're, it's a trend setter, a teen who's setting trends. And one of those trends that we want the teen to set is familiarity and a love of reading. Yes. So um, we have over 5,000 families in the Dallas area that are part of the Teen Trendsetters program. So we hope to fund that program for this year through a celebration of reading. If there are extra funds, then it will go to our programs in South Texas. Um, And then if we are so successful, it can help the programs in other states, which include Mississippi, Oklahoma, Maine, um, Ohio, Florida, other states around the country. Very good. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's go nationwide. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. Well, um, Brill, your involvement, yeah, obviously, as the chairperson for s- the Celebration mm-hmm. of Reading event at the Meyerson on Tuesday, November 6th, that's just kind of the cherry on top of the Sunday for the literacy programs that you've been involved with over the previous several years. And uh, could you please tell us about s- some of the things that you do, particularly there in West Dallas, that's on a year-round basis and not just the one event per year? Sure, but before we pivot away from a celebration of reading, I would encourage anyone to come. It really is such a great 
evening. Mm-hmm. It's a classy evening. You feel like you're somewhere special. You're sitting in the beautiful Marsen, listening to these very smart people who are also entertaining. And then you're visiting with your friends if you choose to stay for the dinner and enjoying a delicious dinner. We went for a tasting at the Marsen, and they do such a great job with their catering. And so you're having a beautiful evening in Dallas, right there. You could take a stroll through Clyde Warren Park before or after. So I really encourage people to come. It's a great way to spend your evening knowing that you're supporting a wonderful cause. And once you're there, they're never asking for any more money. There are no auctions. There's okay. nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But you do have an opportunity, if you would like, to purchase any of the author's books. And afterwards, the authors are signing, but you're not paying for the signing. If you have your own book, you could bring that yeah. too and have them yeah, sign a I, book I, I that can, you already have. I yes. can bring my Bosch books yes. and yes, have Michael Conley sign them. Yes. So, okay, exactly. there you go. Exactly. There you go. We'll For remind sure. our listeners, it's next Tuesday. One week from today, week November from today. 6th. 6 o'clock, right? Um, well, the program starts at 7. 7. And then the... Wine and cheese reception starts at six. Okay. Yeah. And so for more information, they can go to barbarabush.org. Yes. yes. And Very once good. you go on that, you'll see the celebration of reading event that's here in Dallas, Fort Worth. You click on that and it has uh, not only the different uh, pricing for the tickets and a schedule of events, but it also mentions a lot of the different patronage and sponsorship levels and what comes with that. Okay. And uh, also uh, sponsoring for the teacher tickets as well. So we, again, barbarabush.org. That's so right. I encourage you to come. I promise you won't be disappointed. Yeah, it'll be great. Thank Sounds you for like all the work day. that you've put into mm-hmm. this particular event uh, already. But tell us about what you've been doing leading up uh, to this, uh, separate and apart from uh, the actual event, but there in West Dallas. So we're involved, our Wives Association, the Cowboys mm-hmm. Wives Association, which is uh, filled with players, coaches, and staff wives. Right. Uh, and We are involved with Gabe Allen, which is an elementary school in West Dallas, far West Dallas. And so sometimes it gets overlooked because it is so far in West Dallas. And so we have partnered with them, and we have various wives who come and read with or to a classroom or with or to a particular student. So for me, I have been reading with the fourth grade, and so I've been doing that for a number of years now. So I'm reading um, adolescent novels to them. Right now we're reading... The World According to Humphrey. Any of you who are familiar with that, Humphrey is a hamster, and he lives in room 26 (laughs) in Mrs. Brisbane's classroom. And each weekend, he goes home with a different student. And so he is always solving problems for the students in their homes with whatever family dynamics they have that are going on. And Humphrey's best friend is the janitor, and they have a beautiful relationship every evening. So um, these are the kind of books that we read just to show that reading is fun. So that's something. And then Jason and I, through our foundation, do a book club there where we give each of the students a book dependent on grade level. And then there's a, there are exercises that the teachers go through with the students on a daily basis to make sure they've done the reading. So one of those books that's most popular is Wonder, which was a movie mm. that came out last year. So we do that one for the fifth grade. Another one that's really... Um, popular is the one and only Ivan. I don't know if you all have read that, but I encourage all adults to read it too. It's about a gorilla who lives in a pet shop who then is trying to make his way into a a bigger, broader environment. And so these are books that I enjoy reading. And so the kids do too. And when you can share that passion, you hope it makes a lifelong reader. Yeah. Of course. Will you, will you share the story of the starfish, which is a, you and Jason, your starfish charities, uh, put you on the spot here. <laughs> but no, every year when we have a Cowboys U, and by the way, um, Rod Marinelli started a book club for mm-hmm. Five Points Blue. And so Mighty Orphans was our first was the book. first one, right? And yes. so, so um, anyway, thank you to the Gene and Jerry Jones family uh, foundation for purchasing books. Right. So all of the uh, kids who took part in Cowboys U were able to take home uh, Mighty Orphans, uh, 12 Mighty Orphans, and uh, read that. And then there were little note cards in there that they could write about what they learned and then send those postcards back to Coach Marinelli. So that that was kind of, that was a really fun thing. That was very but, cool. But the uh, uh, Jason Garrett Starfish Charities uh, is one of the sponsors of Cowboys U. And if you have not heard the story of the starfish, you need to hear it. So, yes, but not. let me first <laughs> give a shout out to the Marinellis because they are big readers. Barbara comes 
Rod's yes. wife, she reads every week at Gabe Allen. Mm -hmm. And there's a passage in the one and only Ivan where something emotional is happening. And so whenever I read, get to that page, I have to pass it to a student to read because I get emotional. Well, this past year, I had a student come up to me and say, oh, Miss Brill, Miss Marinelli was reading to us today and she started crying. And I said, well, what book? And he said, the one and only Ivan. I said, I know the page. I know where she started to get <laughs> yeah. emotional. Aww. So she is a great reader. And so is Rod. Anytime yes. when I see Rod on a plane, any of the team charters, he always has a book in hand and he's always ready to show me. And I know he's always big with history and biographies and how much you can learn about leadership and all of that through reading. So, um, okay. So the starfish story. So it goes something like this. There's um, an old woman walking on the beach, and she sees a young boy in front of her, and he's picking up starfish one at a time and throwing them into the water. And she looks, and she sees that there are so many starfish on the beach. So she catches up with him, and she says, may I ask you what you're doing? And he said, well, I'm throwing the starfish back into the water. There was a storm last night, and there are thousands of starfish on the beach, and if they are left here, they will dry up and die from the morning sun. And so she says, yes, I do, and I see there are thousands. What difference does this make? What, are, what difference are you making? And so with that, he picks up one starfish, throw, flings it into the safety of the waves, and he says, well, it makes a difference to this one. So the point is each one matters. So if we can get one child to be a lifelong reader, if we can get one child to bring that into his or her home and their reading books together, then we feel like we've done something that's made a difference. That's yeah. beautiful. I yeah. love that. Yeah, wow. when you talk about um, some of the uh, statistics that have to mm -hmm. do with literacy, 36 million Americans that's <laughs> struggle astonishing. with 36, 36 million. million in I was I was shocked. And then another one that I saw, um, if you are not proficient by the third grade, the likelihood of you dropping out of school increases. And oh, th and that is so um, equally compelling by the end of third grade. If a girl is not at grade level for reading, mm -hmm. the correlation between her becoming pregnant and the fact as a teen and the fact that she is not at grade level in third grade is so high that you would be compelled to think it is um, a causal relationship. Well, we know it doesn't cause you to become pregnant as a teen, but sure. you can see the steps. Now you're not getting, if you're not reading, you're not participating in the classroom. So you start to fall out yeah. of the classroom. So now where are you getting your um, accolades? Well, you're going to start to shift in a different way, maybe toward boys and not being in, as engaged in the classroom. And you know, the states of Texas and California have both used grade level for boys at the end of fourth and fifth grade to predict how many prison cells they're going to need in the future. Oh my god. So you can see how compelling reading is in terms of the correlation with success in yes. life. Yes. And finally I have one more. Um, if you are come from a, a home that uh, is middle income or higher, your listening vocabulary is about 20,000 words when you enter school. So 20,000 words. If you come from a low-income household, on average, your listening vocabulary is 3,000 words. So you're looking at 3,000 words versus 20,000 words. And one of the main factors of that is that you're not necessarily read to. And we can understand why. You may be a single parent. You may be working two jobs. You know, you, there's no, we understand. But the fact of the matter is 3,000 versus 20,000 is a big gap right. to bridge. For so sure. we need to be able to do that in the schools and make sure that kids are learning so that they can be productive citizens in our country. So that's where the wow. family literacy where family aspect comes in. Comes in Cause yes. the adults teaching the adults as well as the mm. children and and with Painful. the Barbara Bush yes. Foundation, yeah. it's about awareness right. as well as the programs that we're having this conversation right now. People are surprised at the amount of illiteracy in our country. Yeah. We take it for granted and we want to take it for granted that everybody is reading. Right. And we don't want to have not. any illiter illiteracy. We just want to have literacy. Mm -hmm. Well, if mm -hmm. you'd like to do your part and have a really awesome evening, if you're in the area or want to come to the area next Tuesday, November 6th, the Morton Meyerson Symphony Center is downtown Dallas in the Arts District. And the individual tickets are $125 for the program itself, which starts at 7 o'clock, mm -hmm. which includes the authors that we mentioned. And then for $250 includes the dinner afterwards. 
awards. And again, there are different sponsorship levels to do even more and uh, be more involved with uh, the authors and go to the pre-event. And Christy, you also mentioned earlier, if you have a conflict that particular evening, but you are compelled by the mission, Mm -hmm. please sponsor some of the teachers coming. Exactly. So that we're hosting the teachers and they're having a lovely evening at the Meyerson. And we all, I think, can do more to celebrate our teachers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every day what they're doing is making such a difference in the classroom, which makes a difference outside of the classroom too. Well, we also want to uh, issue an open invitation for you to come back, Brill, because we we didn't, we, um, I know that you uh, are one of the tour hosts for the art tours at AT AT&T Stadium, and we're doing that earlier today. So thank you for coming all the way over to uh, the Star in Frisco to join us for the program today. But uh, I know that's a lot of fun for you. But we need a whole nother 30 minutes (laughs) just to talk about the the, uh, art tour at AT AT&T Stadium. Well, I would just give a quick shout out for the art collection at the stadium. You know, we have over 60, 60 installations. It's a museum quality world-class art collection and so we tour the fifth graders the entire Arlington ISD Mm -hmm. fifth grade and so this is I think the fourth year that we're doing it and so it varies between 4,500 and 5,000 students and we do it throughout the school year and we've got their attention because we've got them at AT AT&T Stadium of course and then (laughs) then we hit them with this incredible art that some of it is 100 feet by 40 feet then we have ones that are three-dimensional and their eyes are big and they are learning about art and who knows what difference it might make for one of them Mm -hmm. and how they approach their their lives oh yeah and so it's one of the best parts of the day is to get to go over the stadium and And, and in their minds it's the coolest place in the city it is for sure (laughs) in the whole nfl yeah for sure yeah but just think when you started that program with those you got kids that are in in high school now you know that are that are taking it and carrying it forward so and at the end of the school year we do um, invite any of them to come back by class and they can submit an art piece of art their oh, own awesome. work of yeah. art and we put them in the end zone for a while and people can come and tour them and we host a reception and their parents can come and I mean it's amazing oh I remember when they did that for the Super Bowl and then also with the NFL draft and then uh yes. they had the, so helmets the helmets and yeah with the helmets and all the artwork on it and then they got to come and see it and it was on display you know not just for the parents and the people involved in the program but all the fans get to see it too that were that had come to AT&T That's Stadium so the and I think it's neat for some of the students the next time that they return to the stadium, they'll have something, if they've been through the art tour, they'll have something to share with the parent and teach them in the stadium. Exactly. Well, look, over there is Terry Haggerty's Two Minds, or <laughs> there is Jim Campbell's Exploded yeah. View, or, you know, what? So it's, it's, so it's an exciting opportunity for everybody, and um, we hope it inspires the students to follow any passion with art. I love that. Yeah, and if you sign up for the AT&T Stadium Art Tour, you may end up with Brill as your tour exactly. guide. So there you go. That's the bonus right there. Totally, and it's something that Christy and I both need to do, the art tour. Yeah. Come yeah. anytime. Mm-hmm. And you know, it is all a gift by the Jean and Jerry Jones family. Mm-hmm. And this is an incredible collection. So come anytime, and I'm happy to take you around. <laughs> Sounds Phil great. and I, if you, I know yeah, Christy and, knows yeah, Phil, and you Phil, know Phil. Yep. The, the people who watch CMT, uh, Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders making the team, Phil, the security security guard yeah yes but he is the he, head of the he art is, program he's the head of the program he's got it yes. down. Mm-hmm. that's so awesome he yeah. has he has um transformed his life through art and he Love is our that. best ambassador for the program uh-huh. he's awesome that's and so we have cool. some other great docents too that are all filled with information and have a lot of good things to say we, we need to get phil phil and brill yes the phil and brill show yes. to come back for, for <laughs> a, a podcast show. sometimes we that. do tours together and <laughs> um we can just pick up each other's sentences right out of the air that is so cute. That is really cute. What a cute team. Well, Brill, I have to say, thank you so much thank for joining you, us today. You, you have you. shared yeah. so much good stuff. I mean, thank you for well, what you're doing with It's great to meet you. You too. Christy is always one of our favorites, Jason and mine. We, we've, we've known been her for a long time. time. <laughs> we, we're not going to give the year because it's been about 27 or 28 years. So we were in kindergarten when we met. So. I know. <laughs> yes. But we yes. appreciate all your good work, both thank, of you. And thank, thank you. you so much thank for everything you, so much. you do. Mm-hmm. And thanks to all, again, BarbaraBush.org for tickets for yes. the celebration of reading at the Morton H. Meyerson Symphony Center in the Arts District in Dallas on Tuesday, November 6th. Mm-hmm. Again, thank you, Brill. And thanks to all of you for for watching everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football and the celebration of reading right here on Five Points Blue. This has been a production of Five Points Blue, DallasCowboys.com, and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?